Hello. So in this first uh, section, um, what we're going to do is just introduce the notion of kind of a, what a partial differential equation or PDE is. Um, we'll give a few examples and then we'll kind of say what the general maybe framework will be for approaching PDEs um, throughout this course. <clears throat> so what is a PDE? Well, a PDE or longer form partial differential equation, it's just any differential equation that involves partial derivatives, right? And so um, when we studied ordinary differential equations, right, usually they took the form like y double prime plus you know, a one y prime plus a two uh, y is equal to zero, right? So this was an ordinary differential equation because y was just a function of say a single variable, x or t or what have you, right? PDEs on the other hand, these are going to involve things like, um, say you might have derivative of u with respect to x plus derivative of u with respect to y, that might be zero. Or in this case, u is going to be a function of both x and y, right? So the fact that our functions um, incorporate, right, more than just a single variable, that's what makes them kind of partial differential equations. <laughs> and so, you know, while ODEs, we can, you know, uh, kind of say a lot with them, um, describe a lot of behavior, a lot of dynamical systems are described using ODEs. Um, if we want to describe just, you know, much more complex models for our world, then we really have to incorporate, you know, more than one kind of variable. Um, so in general, yeah, PDEs let us just describe more complex models of everything we see around us. Um, and kind of what we'll see very, very early on is that in general, solutions to PDEs will behave very differently than um, the kinds of solutions that we can construct for ordinary differential equations. Okay. So what are some examples of PDEs? Um, so kind of the, the starting point will be um, kind of what we're calling the heat equation. Uh, sometimes this is also called the diffusion equation. Um, right, but how this equation is set up is you have a function u which kind of looking at the derivatives that are involved, we're going to assume that u is a function of both x and t, okay? So u is a function of two variables. Generally, we think of x, this as a spatial variable, um, and then t, we're gonna think of as a time variable, okay? But what the heat equation is describing is how kind of heat flows or heat diffuses in one dimension, okay? So how is kind of heat or the temperature of your material or your object, how is that changing in time? Well, it's gonna be proportional to the second derivative of your, uh, the second spatial derivative of your function, okay? Um, and so we'll study this equation in more depth and we'll construct solutions and we'll kind of understand qualitative properties of it. Um, but for now, just think of this as an example of kind of what PDEs might look like. <clears throat> um, so this is in one dimension. So in higher dimensions, right, you can do kind of uh, construct the same sort of um, equation uh, where now we're saying u is a function of x, y, in this case, z, as well as time, okay? Um, this we might also write as u of kind of the vector x and t, where the vector x, this is just shorthand for the vector x, y, z, okay? Um, and so here again, right, so these variables, we're interpreting these as spatial variables, time, or t we're interpreting as time, right? But all this is saying is, well, how is the kind of heat or the temperature of our three-dimensional medium, object, whatever, how is the temperature changing in time? Well, the change in time is going to be proportional to now 
the sum of the second spatial derivatives along each direction, okay? So this is what we'd call the heat equation, okay? In higher dimensions, in this case, in three dimensions. These pieces right here are just uh, alternate notation for the same thing. And so we'll, re we'll revisit and kind of talk about this notation. This one we won't use so much um, because we're gonna reserve delta for small increments. Um, but oftentimes in the literature, when you see this object right here, sometimes people write it as capital Delta U. Okay? And then just another operator, this uh, kind of gradient squared, right? In part, because we're taking the gradient, but twice, very, very roughly speaking, um, but in, in any case, and I should correct this, there should be a K right there, but in any case, the point is, right? Uh, change in temperature and time is proportional to the sum of the second derivatives to spatial derivatives, or sum of the second spatial derivatives, okay? It's just another partial differential equation that we'll be studying um, kind of in this course. Okay. Um, so two other related equations, Laplace's equation, right? Similar expression that we saw before, Except now we're studying, we're looking for a solution U as a function of three variables, which here we're going to interpret all of these as spatial variables. Okay, so in this case, this is a PDE, right? Even though there's no time, um, kind of, or piece that we're interpreting as time, still a PDE because we have. Um, you know, partial derivatives involved. And this is just alternate notation for the same thing. Um, so we'll look at this PDE as well. And then kind of the fourth kind of PDE that will, or a third kind of PDE that will look like is what we'll call the wave equation. Okay, and so as the name suggests, this uh, describes the motion of kind of a wave traveling along a one dimensional, um, medium, like a vibrating string, say. Um, and so here, right, so looking at what's involved, t derivatives, x derivatives, so our solution u, this is going to be a function of x and t, whereas before, this we're interpreting as a spatial variable, and then this we're interpreting as a time variable. Okay, so all of these PDEs are things that we'll be looking at um, kind of in studying and constructing solutions for uh, throughout this course. Okay, um, right, but these aren't the only kinds of PDEs that can arise. <clears throat> okay, so some others that may show up in various classes or I don't know, things that you may be interested in <clears throat> include uh, this first one, Schrodinger's equation. Okay, um, it's similar to the heat equation in that you have one time derivative and two spatial derivatives, okay? Um, but it's unique in that it incorporates specifically this, yeah, purple, right? This complex number i, right? Square root of minus one, okay? Um, but as before, right? Just looking at the pieces, u in this case is gonna be a function of space and time. I write this vector here because we have this nabla squared. Okay, so a priori there could be multiple dimensions, but um, in any case, we have a spatial piece and we have a time piece. Okay, um, so another PDE that may arise is this thing called um, the Navier Stokes equations. Okay, and these describe kind of the motion of um, the motion of fluids. <clears throat> and so here, um, I mean, this is just one way to write it, sure. But looking at the pieces, right? So the derivatives that are involved, what do we have? We have a time derivative of u. So let me go ahead and start writing that. So we're looking for u as a function of since we're taking spatial derivatives here, it looks like we're gonna have a vector x. 
since we have a time derivative here, time is going to be involved and that's it for u. Um, we also have derivatives for this quantity p, okay, and these are spatial derivatives. So maybe we also have an unknown in this quantity p. Um, and so in this case, it looks like p is going to be a function of space, okay? Um, that's just another, uh, another example of a PDE that arises um, that you may see in your studies. Okay, and so <clears throat> last one I wanted to mention is this last one, which is often called the Iconal equation. Um, and so I say here, it describes the propagation, propagation of certain waves. Um, some of the earliest uses of this uh, partial differential equation involved um, kind of modeling the spread of kind of a fire through a uniform medium. Um, oftentimes people use it to kind of construct what you might call distance functions. Um, but we can see that this is a PDE, right? So, um, right, this object, NABLA U, right, of course this is derivative U in X and derivative U in Y, say I'll say, so assuming that uh, U is a function of two dimensions, okay, of course you can add a third dimension, but just so I don't have to write so much out, we'll leave it at this, right? So this vector is a gradient uh, NABLA U. And now what we're doing is we're taking the kind of absolute value or the, in this case, the kind of norm or the magnitude of this vector, right? And so, the magnitude of u, this is the square root of du dx squared plus du dy squared. And the differential equation we're interested in is saying, well, this is equal to one. Okay. Um, just another example of a PDE. Okay. So certainly you'll see many more kind of in your studies and whatever you end up doing. Um, but at least in this class, the ones that we'll be focusing on are wave equation um, to study kind of the motion of waves, Laplace's equation to study kind of uh, heat and equilibrium, and then finally the heat equation in one and multiple dimensions. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Um, and so kind of the general, I might say, philosophical um, point most of our analysis of these PDEs will consist of three parts. Okay. So first is the formulation of these PDEs, right? How do these PDEs um, appear in practice, right? Uh, if you start with kind of physical principles and assumptions about the world, why should you know the flow of heat be described by the PDE that we had written before, okay? Um, so one piece of our analysis will be right, formulating and kind of deriving some of these PDEs. <laughs> Next, we'll actually solve these PDEs, okay? And so PDEs are, uh, they each behave in their kind of unique sort of qualitative ways. Um, and in particular, they behave very differently than um, how ODEs tend to behave. Okay, so much of this course is just, you know, coming up with the right sort of machinery, the right sort of toolbox to construct solutions to these uh, PDEs. Um, and so finally, you know, once or even sometimes before we have these solutions, we'll just interpret kind of these solutions and start making sense of, you know, um, you know, what kind of from physical principles, what behavior do we expect these PDEs to um, have? And then can we see that in either the solution or you know, maybe some proxy to the solution or something like that, okay? Um, and yeah. <clears throat>